welcome spiritual family to AFG ministry, a faithful God ministry. I am Alicia, pastor and founder here, and I am extremely excited that you are here with me today. This is indeed a blessing. Like our welcome video said, wherever you are on your spiritual journey, I know that God will meet you here today. Amen. I'm excited about our spiritual tea today. Today I'm going to spill all the spiritual tea about trust, faith, and anticipate. I would like to start with a prayer. Almighty God, we ask you to bless the church in this place. Here may the weary find rest and the strong be renewed. Here may the doubting find faith and the content be awakened. Here may the tempted find help and the sorrowful find comfort. Here may the believer be encouraged and the lost find salvation. Forgive our sins and cleanse our hearts. Inhabit our praises as we worship. And speak to us through your word. All in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today I'll be referring to Mark chapter 5 verses 21 through 24 as well as verses 35 through 43. While you find and tag the different scriptures, a couple of key items. Number one, as I go through the sermon, you will see slides with key bullet points to make taking notes and journaling easier for you. Bible journey, journaling and receiving the word are so comforting, correct? And number two, let's take a moment to reflect on our past week and give God praise and worship because no matter how hard the test was, we made it. Some of you experienced the toughest week, but if you take a moment to reflect somewhere along your path, God did carry you. Remember, test turns into testimony and the mess in your hot mess turns into a message. Praise him, he is good, amen. There was a story of a businessman from Utah. And while on a business trip to Arizona, he decided to send his wife an email back home. His wife's name was Teresa Johnson. But he mistyped one letter on her email address incorrectly. And the email was sent to Miss Tanya Johnson in Seattle, Washington. Miss Tanya Johnson was the wife of a pastor who had just passed away. When she opened up the email and read it, she fainted. When she finally revived, she pointed to, to the message, to the email. And the email read, I've arrived safely, but it sure is hot down here. <laughs> okay, let's start with our financial term for this week. Angel investors. Angel investors are individuals who provide financial backings for various business ventures. The most common investment are real estate, are real estate ventures. Spiritually, when we, when we have trust, faith, and anticipate, we receive spiritual backings from our, our angel investor God. However, there are times especially in our in our darkest our darkest moments that God is completely silent the silent puts fear it puts it put it puts fear in our hearts to the point where we no longer have trust faith and anticipate right Let's put this in our wise spiritual lens. Have you ever 
felt the disconnect with God. The spiritual struggles and tests makes you makes you want to throw in your spiritual towel, right? Right? I'm raising my hand high because I felt I felt a disconnect from God this week. I felt like God's spiritual deposits were light in my life. This one particular moment of disconnect, this one moment, the enemy used one of my most valued treasures to come against me. He used this valued treasure to throw my insecurities and my imperfections against me. To tell me that people would not look at my spiritual journey as good. And that and that they will attack me. They will come against me with their words. Such as all of a sudden Alicia is a so-called pastor. She barely went to church. She stopped talking to us. And at one point, she cut us out of her life. Now, all of a sudden, she's so godly. Right? So, like I said, before, before this spiritual attack came against me, I was already feeling a disconnect from God. Right? When this attack came for me though, I immediately, I immediately felt defeated. And I, I threw in my spiritual towels. Blah, blah, just threw them in. When I began to feel a disconnect, I did not walk. I didn't, I did not walk into my spiritual dressing room to put on my spiritual armor to protect me from the attack. And this allowed, this allowed for the enemy to breach my perimeter using my most valued treasures to come against me. Since I was disconnected from God and spiritually naked, I wasn't forewarned about the attack. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared for the attack. The, the attack made me feel a sense of, of despair. I was completely lost of hope. See, despair is caused by us no longer trusting God, having faith, or anticipating God's strength. Despair is caused by us not disciplining ourselves to be patient, to be still, and wait for His grace. See, we know that God could, but not sure that God would, right? Despair causes us to, to self-sabotage our thoughts. That, that make us turn away from God and take matters into our own hands to try to figure it out. Leaving us open, exposed, and without a leader. No guidance. No plan of attack back right we have at that particular moment when that happens we have put an instant block against our angel investor depositing additional revenues spiritual backings into our spiritual bank right and essentially leaving ourselves exposed for the enemy to come 
and attack and rob us. We're a baseball family. And I like to think of, of, of my own, of my, of my own spiritual baseball field, so to speak. And on my spiritual baseball field, God is, he's the owner of the team. He's the manager and the coach. And my team consists of all 12 disciples and myself. The 12 disciples, see, they're veterans. They're veterans on this particular field and in this spiritual baseball game. Because they know all the rules. They know all the plays in God's playbook and rule book. Right? We are playing an infinitive baseball game spiritual baseball game against the enemy and his team of minions. When tests and struggles are present in our lives, this is the enemy using our weaknesses against us. The enemy pitches, he pitches our fears and doubts. And he has, oh, he has a nasty slider. Woo, he has a nasty slider. Right? Because these are the pitches that slide right down the middle. Straight into zone two. Our fear zone. He influences us that God will never answer our prayers that we are not worthy or deserving of God's promises pitch after pitch we just stand there we just stand there holding our back staring blankly and not swinging strikeout after strikeout we turn defeated with our heads down, going to the dugout, dragging our bat in the dirt. We no longer trust, faith, and anticipate. In the midst of my despair, I realized the reason why I was striking out at each at bat was because the, the enemy he knows my name. He knew my name before I even suited up and put on my jersey. He, he knew my name before I even came onto the field. See, he knew my name before he even received the lineup. See, at the same time that God called my name, to go on my spiritual journey and to do my spiritual work and speak the word of God, this was the same time that the enemy, this is the same time that the enemy put an asterisk next to my name, followed by a P1. P1 means, P1 means that I became the enemy's first priority to infiltrate and defeat his attacks will come faster with greater velocity against me the scripture tells us that that when people come against us and attack us with their words attack our faith and beliefs we need to consider this a God, we need to consider this a blessing because this means that we have God's spirit. We are surrounded with God's spirit and glory, right? 
not them. The scripture also tells us specifically that we should not be, we shouldn't be surprised of the battles. We shouldn't be surprised of the struggles because this is not something new or unexpected. Correct? In the early days of the automobile, a man's Model T Ford stalled. I know everyone's probably thinking, the younger generation is thinking, what is a Model T Ford? But it's an it was an automobile. Anyway, so the man stalled in the middle of the road one day. And he couldn't, he couldn't get, he couldn't get the car started no matter how hard he cranked it or how much he tried to advance the spark, right? Or how much he adjusted things underneath the hood. Just then a limousine pulled up behind him. A well-dressed, energetic man stepped out from the back of the limousine and offered his assistance. He went underneath the hood and after tinkering for a few moments, the well-dressed man said, try it now. The man went into his car, turned over the key, and immediately the engine came to life. The well-dressed man identified himself as Henry Ford. He told the man, I designed and built cars, built these cars. So I know, I, I know what, it, what to do when something goes wrong. God, God is our manufacturer. He designed and created us. Just as he knows the troubles that will come against us. He also knows how to troubleshoot. And he knows exactly what is needed to fix us and to fix our lives, our struggles. I want to talk about Jarius. He was a leader at the temple and was a man of high influence and high prestige. Unfortunately, he had a 12-year-old daughter, his only daughter, and she was gravely ill. And as a parent, he felt helpless. He was conflicted. Jarius was conflicted because even as a religious leader, he believed in Jesus and in his powers. He had trust, faith, and anticipate. Although all the other leaders were against Jesus, they wanted to get rid of Jesus at, at this time. By going to Jesus, this would, this, this would mean going against the temple. However, as a parent, we would sacrifice everything for our children, correct? When Jesus arrived in town, Jesus was greeted by a large crowd. And Jarius was there and he, he made his way through the large crowd. And when he finally came in front of Jesus, he immediately fell to Jesus' feet. And he begged, he begged Jesus to lay his hands on his daughter, to heal her. Because 
Jarius again, he trusted, he had faith, and he anticipated that all Jesus had to do was touch her or speak to her. And she would be healed. She would live. As Jesus, as Jesus and the crowd followed Jarius to his home, Jesus stopped. He stopped and he stopped on the way to perform a miracle. On another woman. And to, to speak to the crowd. Even with this delay of healing his daughter, Jarius, Jarius still, he still had trust, faith, and anticipated. While Jesus was speaking to the crowd, someone came with came with news that Jerry's daughter had passed away. Jesus heard the news and he turned to Jarius and told him, do not be afraid. You just need to believe. Jesus walked into Jarius' home and was faced with confusion and grievance. He asked the people in the home, why the confusion? Why the sobbing? For she is only sleeping. The people in the house laughed. They laughed at him. They didn't have trust, faith, and anticipation. And Jesus, Jesus knew this. He knew this. He knew that they were faithless. This caused him to tell them to all, all those people needed to leave. He told them all to leave. He removed all the spiritual debts and the unrighteousness from the house. He walked into the room, over to the young girl, and he spoke to her. And he told her to get up. Immediately, the girl stood up and walked around. God will save us. He will save us and anyone or anything that touches us. That belongs to us. As long as we, as long as we have trust, faith, and anticipate. There was a story of an Arthur who attended a conference some years back. When it was over, her friend offered her a ride to the airport. As they were about to leave, another man asked if, if he can join them for the ride to the airport. As they drove away from the hotel, she and her, her friend asked the man where he worked. And he mentioned a familiar Christian organization. Her friend driving was aware of the organization and had actually attended a retreat at the organization many years ago. The driver, he went on to explain that he had warm memories of the retreat and that eventually his whole family became Christians and, and went into Christian work because of this particular retreat. His sister was a missionary and he himself became a, a publisher of a major Christian publishing house that brought many Christian books available to the public worldwide. He finished the story saying that the retreat had a global, a worldwide impact when you think about it. The man remained silent. There was a pause. And the man in the back seat, the stranger said, I led that retreat. 
it was my very first time as a conference leader and I felt like a total failure at that time and up until this very moment I have always believed it was one of my biggest failures of my life see things are not what they seem correct this story is a reminder that God is our silent investor he's our angel investor and is constantly he's constantly working in the backdrop of our lives we spend all the time and energy thinking that we are not worthy of success that we are not worthy of healing but truly only God knows he only knows he only knows the blueprint of our spiritual lives our action items for the week are first and foremost give praise yes then we need to have trust faith and anticipate all we need is God's grace in our time of weakness his power is the strongest when we are weak see God wants he wants to show up in our lives he wants to show up and show out in our lives he wants to do the unthinkable the unexplainable and the unimaginable in our lives right all we need trust faith and anticipate God's salvation especially in our in our darkest times because these are the times he will make his presence clearer in our lives it is not about our strength or abilities that will see us through those times but it is about our abilities to rely on his strength we need to be still and know that the struggles we are facing these struggles are not unexpected they're not surprises to God sometimes those struggles are his whispers for us to come closer and rely on his strength alone my quote for this week is by Chris Jamie the harder you fall the heavier your heart the heavier your heart the stronger you climb the stronger you climb the higher your pedestal <laughs> fun spiritual fact the word salvation the word salvation appears 158 times in the Bible thank you for joining me today I look forward to the next time again you will receive God's absolute blessing this week because you have God's unconditional love. Yes, he will carry you. Before I close, I ask that you please visit our website, AFG Ministry, a Faithful God Ministry website, and visit our prayer room and submit a prayer request. The power of prayer is so forceful and intense, and we would love to pray over you. Yes. I want to close reading Numbers chapter 6 verses 24 through 26 as my closing prayer may the Lord bless you and protect you may the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you may the Lord show you his favor and give you peace in his name amen